y'all want to sit up here? Not that we want to put you on the spot or anything, or call you out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He could have said anything, and Solomon asked for wisdom. He asked for God for wisdom, and God gave it to him. And the thing is, if you read the stuff that Solomon did, it doesn't always sound like something a wise person would do. Solomon spent decades pursuing every pleasure on earth imaginable. If you imagine that you had infinite money, infinite time, and nobody was going to put you in jail, and you could just try everything that felt good to see what was right, that was Solomon. if you don't follow God and keep his commandments. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. Just right off the bat, listen to this prop, this promise he makes that if we do not forget God's commandments, if we do not forget what God teaches us, it says that it will, it will add length of days and years of life and peace to our lives. I can sing of your love. People that have never dated, giving dating advice. People that have never been married, giving marriage advice. People that ain't parents. People that ain't parents telling you how to raise your kids. <laughs> when that stuff happens, you don't, you know, like, what do you know? Solomon did everything. Everything you can think of stupid, he did it. And Solomon can say, look, don't do it. So Solomon experienced all this, and he was able to say, look, if you keep God's commandments, if you follow Him, it's going to add time to your life. It's going to add peace to your life that you're not going to get anywhere else. Now, I'm not going to ask Pastor Chris. I'm not going to ask Pastor Chris to tell his age, but the fact is, this guy looks a lot younger than he is. Hey, I'm old enough to know better. He's old enough. Don't tell you But the thing is, you can tell when somebody's life has been full of peace. Or full of strife, anguish, and turmoil. You can tell that. And the fact is, it, God's not just giving you a euphoric spiritual term. He's saying, seriously, you follow God, you're going to live longer. You know, that doesn't qualify for people that are martyrs or people that die following God. But the fact is, if you live out your days following God, it's going to add days, years, life, and peace to you. Then going on, he says, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. I always love that phrase. But it says, don't ever get rid of them. Don't ever let them be far from you. Keep steadfast love and faithfulness this close to you. Tie it to you. Write it on your heart. Whatever you have to do, don't let it get away from you. Okay. Now here's the thing, though. Ask yourself, how many people do you actually know that are constantly loving, steadfast love, that are faithful in every situation? Because you know what? If you have that in any situation, you're going to stand out. Whether you got Jesus or not. People in the business world, people in school, if they see somebody that is faithful and compassionate, loving, 
They may not believe in Jesus, but they'll believe they see steadfast love and faithfulness in you. And you know what? You will stand out in the sight of God and man. Very few things stand out in the sight of God and man. You know, if you work hard, you might stand out in the sight of man, but if your heart's wrong, God doesn't care. If you have a 4.0 in school, but you don't love God, you're shunned either way. The thing is, if you want to stand out in the sight of God and man, you keep steadfast love and faithfulness right here. Because the greatest commandment of all is love God. The second greatest commandment is love everybody else. So if you keep that steadfast love straight up right here in your life, in your hearts, you're going to be following God. You're going to be loving your neighbor, and you are going to stand out to where everybody else can see that. Now, the faithfulness thing is this. The fact is, how many people do you know that you just can't trust? How many people do you know that you can't depend on? How many people do you know will abandon you in a heartbeat for something else? And the fact is, faithfulness is a quality that stands out. And when somebody is faithful to you, that stands out. When you know somebody's going to stand by you no matter what, people notice that. People are going to notice that faithfulness. And that's what saves marriages. That's what saves friendships. That's what saves relationships. When somebody steadfast, I always love that word steadfast, meaning that no matter what's coming at you, you're going to hold your ground. That's that love, that faithfulness that doesn't budge. If you're going to love somebody, don't love them with an ulterior motive. Don't love them to get them to do something. Christians are really guilty sometimes of we'll show somebody that doesn't know Jesus' love just to get them in church. Like, here, fishy, fishy. And you know what? Jesus doesn't say love your neighbor to get them to church. Jesus just says love your neighbor. We need to love people with all our hearts, even if they have no intentions of coming to our churches. We need to love people with all our hearts if we're not going to get anything out of them. That's that steadfast love, that you love them for the sake that Jesus said so. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. This is a verse that I'll use a lot, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But the fact is, realize you don't know everything. Realize that if you want to lean on your own understanding and argue with what God says, you're going to mess up. What in the world? So I turn right, and then it says recalculating. And then it's, and it says, I'm looking for 4925 and this one thing. And so I follow the directions where it says, and I get to 4923, 4924, 4926, 4927. And I get out of the car, and I'm like, 4925 has to be here. <laughs> and I seriously got so frustrated. The, 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 the GPS was saying, go 0.2 miles. And turn, I'm like, no, because I refused to believe that thing was right. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> we got back in the car and went to 0.2 miles, and there it was. And... <laughs> I leaned on my own understanding because I thought I knew better than that machine that doesn't know where a left is. <laughs> and the thing is, so often, so often we treat God like that. When we are following Christ the way we should be, we'll be able to look in our lives and see where this stuff is just coming out in our lives. It's not just, you know, something you can fix overnight, but it is something God wants in your life. It's something God wants in my life and in our community and our families.